Y'all, so today's video, I'm going to try and accomplish two things. One, I'm going to show you my pocket holster that I made and show you how I made it, give you a rough idea. And two, I figured it's a good chance I need to test some new video editing, a new video editing app that I'm trying out because the one I've been using, uh, let's just say it's less desirable now that uh, they're charging me for it, whereas before it was free to use and you could deal with the crashes and bugs now that they're charging me for it. I figured there's got to be something better. Uh, but enough of me complaining about that. Let's get into the video. So, uh, this is what I made. And the reason I made this was because um, I'm a big fan of carrying reloads. Even if it doesn't matter what the gun it is, I always like to have at least one reload just to say I do. And if practical, two reloads. So, uh, with carrying my 329 PD, I just started out carrying it. Um, I was looking for ways to carry reloads. Now, your traditional belt holster or belt pouch, whatever you want to call it, can actually quint, print quite poorly with uh, with a speed loader of this size, right? Because it's, you know, in the front of your belt sticking out and it's actually quite a bulge. But the other, the one good thing about these is they fit really nice in a pocket, but the problem with having these speed loaders in a pocket is they tumble around, they jostle around, and if you have more than one, they can get uh, banged together and ding and dent your bullets and all that. Or, worst case scenario, the knob twists and the rounds fall out. So I was looking at different ways to carry them in the pocket uh, without that happening, and of course, pocket holster is the perfect way to do that. Now, there are a couple companies that made something like this, right but the problem was nobody made one for an end frame uh, there was basically you could find ones for a J frame and a K frame but nothing you know L or bigger so I figured I would make my own and here's what I made right um, I'm calling it the pocket taco because it's kinda like a tortilla and then you uh, put your uh, your meat and your lettuce and all that in there and you got a little pocket taco right yes I know it's silly but my holster I made it I get to call it what I want so I'm gonna show how I made it and kind of show how easy it is to make a simple holster like this because this is in fact a very very simple holster um, I am only uh, basically an amateur when it comes to leather work and I'm sure you know there are <laughs> if any decent holster maker sees this they're gonna realize that yeah you know, my edges aren't cleaned up. Sewing is good, but not amazing. But again, even being someone who has an amateur knowledge of leather working, um, it works. So, what I did was, uh, basically the most important thing with a pocket holster is making sure it fits in your pocket. So what I started out by doing was I took a pair of, uh, I usually wear Wrangler jeans, and I took the pocket and I kind of traced it out here on a piece of paper, right? So I traced out the pocket like so, and then I folded it over and then I cut it out. So I had the outline of the pocket and then I just cut out this sheet like so, making it that I had a piece of leather, right? And then what I did was, was once I had this piece, right I uh, kinda like taped it up a little bit along the bottom and I figured out how much space I would need to fit the pocket holsters now it's important because um, the reason I use paper is something that Andrews custom leather uh, said in one of his videos was better to go through reams of paper than leather because paper is much cheaper so once I had figured out my general shape I needed for uh, my holster. I then transferred that over to leather. I was given some scrap leather by someone who makes nice holsters and um, I've used it for various little projects and stuff. So I took a uh, piece I had, cut it out, and for now we'll, we'll pretend this is leather because I don't actually want to cut out another uh, piece of leather because I only have a couple more pieces left. But So I had this with leather, right? So what I did after that was a thing called wet molding. 
And what wet molding is, is generally leather before it's uh, wet molded, it's quite flexible and all that, right? Like this is bendable and flexible and all that. And it, like you can fold it and bend it and it won't really retain its shape. What wet molding is, is um, you soak the leather in water for, I did for about a half an hour after, and that's why it's really saturated in, in the uh, water. And then what I did after that was I took the leather after it was soaked and I folded it over like so. Again, we're pretending this is a leather and I stuck the speed loaders in their spots where they needed to go, right? Like so, we'll pretend there's a second one there. And then I clamped all around down here and in between the speed loaders so that it would hold that shape. And I'm gonna put a picture in right now of what that looked like. Okay, so and that was what it looked like when it was clamped down. Now after I let it sit for about two days just to make sure it was all perfectly dry, um, it basically, after that, it, it held its shape and looked kind of like this, but um, you know, not this color. It looked like the uh, lighter color that you saw in the first picture. And after that, that was how I wet molded it, and it was able to at least somewhat hold the shape I needed uh, for my project. Now what I did after that was I removed all the clamps and everything, and that's when I glued it. So some people don't realize that actually uh, a lot of leather crafting does actually, on top of stitching, use different leather, cement, stuff like that. And uh, this is the stuff I used. I actually got this at uh, Michael's. I, I believe it's pronounced Fibings, Fibing, F-I-E-B-I-N-G-S, right? Uh, leather craft cement. So what I did was, and we use this again, was I went and put all along this edge, right? And stuck it back together and then reclamped it again and let that sit for another day because they say uh, some of the some of those cements and stuff can take uh, 24 to 48 hours to set up and after I let the glue dry it looked like this okay so at that point I was pretty much almost done um, what I did after that was after the glue dried I stitched it up now what I used is, and this is actually something I used for the first time, I've stitched a couple things before by hand and I must say this is infinitely faster. Uh, there's a couple different names I've heard this on the internet. Some call it a leather awl, A-W-L, and some people call it a speedy stitcher. Basically what this tool is, and I'm not going to go super into detail of it because if you just Google uh, using a leather awl, uh, there'll be much better videos on how to use it, whereas uh, from what I could describe, but basically it allowed me to perform a lock stitch, right? And I was able to stitch up uh, this entire holster, right? And what I did was before I started stitching, I guess I should mention was, uh, I actually got this cool little kit off Amazon for like 30 bucks and it included several leather working tools, including these, right? And what these are, these punches allow you to pre, uh, pre-put in the holes for uh, stitching. So uh, as you can imagine, going through two layers of leather with a needle can actually, it's uh, quite tough and can be quite annoying. So with this, it was nice because I was able to just go along and with a ha basically with a hammer, and I put this underneath a wood block with a hammer, just uh, tap on it a few times and it would punch the holes in the leather, making stitching much easier. So after I stitched that up right, uh, pretty much all that was left after that was uh, putting, giving a final, final hardening with uh, beeswax, which is why it has this darker color and it's a little bit ununiform. But again, this this goes in the pocket, so it doesn't really bother me that much. And so what I did was uh, to the reason you coat a holster like this in beeswax is two reasons. One, bees, beeswax really helps with the hardening process and it also uh, waterproofs it a little bit. So of course this is gonna be in my pocket and if it's a hot day out, you know, it gets sweaty, it's whatever, maybe it's raining outside and your pants get a little wet, um, the beeswax helps keep it waterproof because what'll happen is 
When leather gets wet like that, it gets soppy, it gets whatever, and it'll lose its shape. So what I ended up doing was um, to coat this in beeswax, you're going to put it in the oven. I put mine in the oven for about a half hour at 185 degrees. And what that does is, at least according to uh, the internet, it uh, liquefies the molecules in the leather. Basically, it, it kind of like opens up the pores of the leather and allow it to accept the beeswax. Also, when it cools, it the, just the baking itself of the leather can also help harden it. So what I did was I stick that in the oven for half an hour. I uh, stuck some beeswax in the microwave. And what I actually used was I actually used a foam brush. And once it was done baking, I just merely painted the uh, a coat of beeswax on top of the holster and what happens is the beeswax actually gets soaked in to the holster that's why you can see especially like spaces like here it um you really it doesn't really have a waxy coating or anything on it it's it's soaked into the leather and uh that was pretty much it that was how i made my little pocket speed loader holster and I guess the one thing I didn't mention was uh, you'll notice the uh, rough texture here on the outside and how on the inside it's actually fairly smooth. The reason I did that was because, um, again, this is kind of a rough texture. You're going to want that if it's in a pocket because that's going to help retain the speed loader or the speed loader pouch in your pocket. So when you go to draw your speed loaders, um, the speed loader pouch stays in your pocket and doesn't follow out with the speed loader. And I kind of designed this so it's actually a fairly loose um, retention, right? So like they, they're in there and like I can shake this around and they're not going anywhere, you know, they're staying in there, but I can easily, uh, you know, just pop these out as needed. See there, how, and one of the reasons why uh, it's such a light retention is I did not sew this uh, together forming like a real tight thing so it kind of flexes a little bit when I stick them in. So yeah, that was basically how I made my little pocket speed loader pouch. Um, again, with there not really being anybody currently on the market making these, you know, if, if you're someone who uh, carries a, a larger revolver, this, uh, this might help you. It's, again, it's a very simple thing to make. And it was actually kind of a fun little project. It really didn't cost too much. Um, luckily I had scrap leather floating around, which I know not everybody does, but scrap pieces of leather are easy enough to find if you, uh, ask around. And like I said, the, uh, the leather kit was 30 bucks. And if you wanted to, you could sew this by hand. You don't have to use, uh, one of these, you know, it's not going to look as nice, but it will do the job. So... That's my little holster. That's how I made it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and have a good day.